Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 436 for Friday, March 31st, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks. Here we are on a Friday afternoon here with Business Brain. We are the show where we take our business brains and apply them to all kinds of situations to get that extra perspective Sponsors for this episode include Notion.com slash business brain. That's where you're going to go to get uh, the ability to try Notion's AI engine for free. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm still out here in Lafayette. Uh, this is Shannon Jean. Hopefully Friday, because we're recording this a little early. Hopefully well, it's sunny you know. and nice. Yeah, I'm uh, just, I'm there, putting versus. myself in the Friday afternoon mindset, yeah, Shannon. I love it. That's yeah, really man. It's good. Yeah. It's I listened bad. to this uh one radio show that I really like. And one thing I, I love is on Thursday, they refer to it as little Friday. <laughs> and he's like, welcome Pre- to little Friday. Friday. And I'm like, that's great, man. I like that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Little Friday. Sure. Little Friday. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm glad that we're, we're doing two shows. We're getting great response from that. The little shorter, uh, yeah. you know, b- b- bite-sized pieces and people seem to love it. Uh, because I always have tons of questions, and I, I have another question this week that I want to talk to you about. All right, man, I'm I'm, break, I'm here. Break it down. I'm yeah. I'm here so, chilling on a Friday afternoon. So perfect, you know, it's perfect. I'll get um, a beer. We'll get, we're good to go. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, so I I'm, I'm I work with an organization. I, I do some I do lots of stuff, but one of the groups sure. that I work with, um, they have kind of historically embraced a uh, command and uh, control. Uh, infrastructure. And um, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that, the way I, I am looking at it. At yeah. Least, what's, what's your definition of this? Yeah. yeah my yeah. definition of it is there's a gatekeeper who controls access to getting things done. A business owner, leader, whoever you, you know, whatever you, you, you pick. An yeah. Example. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. But yeah. somebody that everything has to go through and it, I, I, I believe strongly that the more you can flatten your organization out and kill the command and control infrastructure, the more valuable your business will be for everybody, yourself, your employees, prospective employees, somebody who may want to buy your business. So I, I, I want to talk about it with you to be sure, am I right? Am I missing something? Or, you know, is, is this the case? So is this is this a scenario where it would be the business owner is yeah. is, is in the command and control? So it's it's not a, well, a you, layered approach. I, I just want to I, I want to set the I stage could, the right way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in this case, it would be a business owner, but I suppose it could also be like a department manager, maybe a supervisor. You know, that was slowing things down, a middle layer of management. Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Um, All right. And so, so it could it could be could be it could be a scenario where you've got. Uh, you know, a, a an entire yeah. system in place that is yes. based on this command and control thing. I've never heard it called command and control before, but I, yeah, but I, I, but I I'm sure it exists. In fact, I see an ink article here ah. from, uh, from, uh, where was it? Well, you know, they don't, they don't put the date on these things because ah. they, they think that that's Smart. bad or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but it says command and control leadership is dead. Um, well, I love that, and and I hope that's true. And I, I so I I'll, I can give you some more examples, but it's more this this system than it is an in, a, a type of individual or whatever. I suppose that it could work in all kinds of different layers of the organization, but primarily, I'd say business owner. Oh, that sound means I get to tell you about our sponsor. Our sponsor today is Notion AI. Notion by itself is this amazing engine that combines your notes and your docs into one space that's simple, collaborative, beautifully designed, and now, thanks to AI, more powerful than ever, Notion AI helps you work faster, write better, and think bigger doing tasks that normally take you hours in just seconds. And this is because you can now leverage the power of AI right inside of Notion across all your notes and docs without the need to jump between whatever you're working on and some separate AI-powered tool. Notion AI, it lets you skip to the good part. 
You get to save time and write faster by letting Notion AI handle those brainstorms of the first draft or to take your messy notes into something polished, which is something I have really become enamored with doing. It's amazing. I just like throw together thoughts and then say, make this sound better. Break it up into, you know, three paragraphs or whatever I want it to do. It's going to make it sound better. Heck, I can make it give me my notes in iambic pentameter. I don't know if that's going to be relevant for your use case, but this is the kind of thing that you can do. You just tell Notion AI what to do. The more details, the better. And you just go in, select text, click Ask AI, and boom, increase your productivity like never before. And for a limited time, Try Notion AI for free when you go to Notion.com slash Business Brain. That's all lowercase letters, Notion.com slash Business Brain to try out the incredible power of Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. We appreciate that. That's good for you. That's good for us. This is a limited time offer. Try Notion AI for free right now at Notion.com slash Business Brain. And our thanks to Notion and Notion AI for sponsoring this episode. You know, talking about Notion, it makes me think about how much I'm using AI these days. Like, for for, for example, Shannon, I, uh, with one of my other shows where I'm the one that, like, has to put together the show notes, I will okay. write up the description for the show notes, right? Y you know, what it's going to say. Yeah. This is what the episode was about. And, and then what I'm doing now is I take that and I put it into a, a, an AI, and I've used Notion to do this. But it, you could do this with any AI if you if you so chose, and asked it to make it more exciting, make the text more active, and I mean within seconds I get exactly that. And then I say, okay, great, take that and distill it down into uh, an SEO friendly meta description that is between 120 and 160 characters, because that's what the general consensus is that a meta description should yeah. be. And it gives me that. And it's like, what a time saver. Now, what I know other people, other podcasters are doing, somebody at Podcast Movement said this, they take the transcript from their show, feed that into an AI engine, and say, give me 10 titles for an episode based on this transcription. And then they take the best one and maybe massage it from there. So... There's lots of things where AI can oh, really yeah. do this for us. Tell us what your examples are. I really want to know, how are you using AI? I, I We will share more examples of our own, too, in an in a upcoming episode. Yeah. So, But I want your examples as well. I want to really start sharing this. So feedback at businessbrain.show. How are you using AI? I, I, I really want to know this. Now— And, and if you're, if oh, you're not, let me just—if you're not yeah. using it— you, I would suggest you start doing some research and reading about it because it's sign going up for to Notion a, AI for free. For, yeah, like, yeah, it, it, it's going to have a dramatic impact on all of us. This is a big inflection moment in technology oh, right big now. Big time. Yeah, it's it's you know an iPhone moment. You know when they did this, a, a Google moment. This is another thing. And learning about AI and how to do prompts to get back information, like Dave is just describing is very important uh, for all of our future. Yep. I was, I, yep. Yes, 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 yes. Yep. So we're right. talking about new stuff, but what about this, you know, command, command and control, control leadership. Uh, yeah. leadership thing? And and it. I, I like you mentioned that title, you know, it's the command and control leadership is dead. But there are people that I think still use it and think that it's the only way to get things done the way they want and this kind of thing. And, and you know, it I, is I just, an easy way for us control uh, freaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true, but it's so frustrating for people that want to go out and uh, do do things, introduce new ideas, make small mistakes, and adjust and iterate and find new ways to do things, generate money, increase productivity. When you have a gatekeeper, man, it's very frustrating. And and I had a I had. I'm, like I said, I'm working with a, a group and trying to help get some things done and been meeting with some people that all have expressed, well, I'm I'm at the point where I don't want to start anything new because it just gets shut down, you know, this mm. kind of this kind of stuff. And, you know, if you're a business owner and you're using this thing, it's like I also kind of call it the superhero complex 
when you first start, like I know I had it when I started my first. Yes. Couple of businesses. Oh no, it's super easy. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and you think that everything has to go through you. It's your idea. You're you're the best at this, the best at that. And if it takes a long time to get to the point where you start realizing, oh, I need to hire people that are smarter than I am in different areas. I'll focus on the stuff that's kind of in my wheelhouse, but I need to delegate out. And true power comes by giving up control, in my opinion. Okay. And, right? I think it, it's because it makes, like I said earlier, uh, before the, the sponsor uh, spot, that make, it makes your company more valuable. I, I read a lot of business guys, acquisition t- you know, tips and this kind of thing, and over and over, the advice is, Buy a business that the owner has already stepped back from. Oh. Because that business is gonna going to be far more healthier and easier for you to step in. Totally. And not have to replace this superhero command and control person or whatever. They've already done the work and delegated and hired good people and have spread things out and flattened their organization. That's the kind of company you want to buy, not that is got some rock star rainmaker, you know, whatever yeah. term you want, that makes everything happen and you're going to have to replace it. And them. then you got to be um, that rainmaker because you now have the keys. Yeah. 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 And that was and one so of the it, hardest things we had going when we sold uh, the Mac Observer was yeah. the guy who was buying well, it. The more he learned about the business, he's like, wow. He's like, you know, Dave, you've done a lot for this business. Yeah. And I was like, yes, yes. I have. But- I really don't spend much time on it right now. Like I and and convincing him of that was really yeah. important. Like, no, look, it this thing important. runs itself. I know that it seems like I'm involved a lot, but I really am not. Let me show you what a day in the life of Dave looks like. And it's really not much of that. This is a good opportunity. And it it turned out it was. Yeah. But um, Yeah, that, that that's yeah. that's a big deal. It, you know, really yeah. increases the value. And if you ever talk, you know, we had uh Bob grew all on the show about, you know, selling your business yeah. a few years ago. And if you ever talk to him and I've talked to him at length, I know you have too as well, Dave, that that's one of the big things they ask, you know, what systems you have in place, what, yep. what is easily transferable. So, so flattening your organization, you know, cause that's what people look for. But I would also argue that it makes your company more valuable to attract better talent, Right. Top performers don't want to be stifled and they want autonomy and they want to be able to create and build something on their own. And, you know, that's how you you get them because you can have that conversation go, hey, look, we want to hire you to do X, Y, Z. We're going to give you this autonomy. We're going to, you know, uh, give you budgets and this and that. I'm not going to be micromanaging you this, you know, um, and it, it you it, it's a great cycle to get into versus everything having to go through one person or maybe two people. And maybe you have a manager that has kind of implemented this command and control thing to feel more powerful. That's a problem because you can yeah. have similar, you know, similar issues. It's going to be the same. Like we talked about earlier in the episode here, like it's, it's the, yeah. it, regardless of whether it's the business owner who Who's is yep. implementing this or, or practicing this or a manager, if you as the business owner are allowing for this, infrastructure this leadership style to happen it, you got to fix it no i i yeah, yeah it to. it's tough though because oh, very hard. sometimes very hard. sometimes it happens if for ego reasons or control freak reasons and and those are also valid but other times it happens by necessity when you're starting the yeah. business it has to yes, be that way yes. and it's really yeah. difficult it takes effort to change from that because by default your small business that you started by yourself and then started adding people to eventually will remain in this command and control leadership style because you're the rainmaker because you always had to be until you yeah. move it from that. It, it really yeah. takes effort. So yeah, yeah, this is it's tough. It, and that it's just something to think about, you know, Read the E Myth. We always talk about that book here. It's great. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot of this kind of feedback from that book, and um, you know you want to be able to work on the business, not in the business all the time. And that's harder at the beginning, but as your company grows and you bring in better quality people, you should be able to step back uh, and uh, embrace this 
you know, flattening and uh, the organization delegating, but, yeah. uh, you know, share your stories. We'd love to hear it. You know, mistakes you've made. I mean, I've made more than anybody who's probably listening right now, but, uh, feedback at businessbrain.show. How have you flattened your organization to make it more valuable? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear this. Feedback at businessbrain.show. And as we always say, if your email's featured in an episode, meaning we read it, you're entered to win a MacBook Air in 2023. So keep living that charmed life, and we will uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, I have one more tip for you today before you go. If you want to learn about the most powerful customer service concept on the planet, the next podcast you listen to should be episode 118 of Business Brain, where we first introduce the concept of two tokens. Two tokens will turn your customer service department upside down and change how you solve problems. It's simple, easy to implement and teach, and it will thrill your customers. So have a listen. Search for the number 118 at businessbrain.show or click the link in the show notes of this week's episode. And cheers to your success.